Hey y'all, it's Chels. Welcome back to another Thursday advice video. Today the topic we are going to be talking about is a very popular one and one I get asked a lot, which is how to grow in your faith. Now I remember growing up and accepting Jesus into my heart and really just longing for growth. And I don't think I necessarily knew that that was the word that I was longing for, but I knew that I wanted more. And I think that is the essence of Christianity and the essence of being a Christian is you are never really satisfied in that relationship because it is a continual growth process. And just like any other relationship, whether it's um, with a husband and wife or a brother and sister or just a friend and another friend, like you always want to grow deeper in that relationship. You don't want to remain stagnant or feel like you don't have any more to share. I feel like in every relationship, there's always room for growth. And the same goes for Christ. I think a lot of people think that this relationship is so much different than any other relationship that we have with other people in general. But really, it goes hand in hand. And I think the reason this question is such a big one is because a lot of people are longing for that and that is a good thing to long for because the one relationship that I think that we should experience most growth in in our entire life is one with Jesus and it's the one that's going to go through a lot of trials and hardships just like any other relationship. So I'm going to give a few like helpful tips and pointers and things that I have just sort of done in terms of growing in Christ and this might not help all of you but hopefully it helps a few of you just maybe even changes your mindset on the term growth in Christ because we're all at different points in our life. The truth is a lot of us look towards other Christians to see how they're growing in their faith or what are they putting on social media or, oh my gosh they have such a good caption on their Instagram God's really speaking to them or you know we just kind of look towards other people and their example and be like wow like I really want that. I just think a lot of us need to get out of the mindset of comparing ourselves to other Christians because I think that is honestly something that I really struggle with and I see a lot of people doing because a lot of people like want what they don't have but you already have it. If you have a relationship with Christ, if you've accepted him to your heart, then you have the potential to grow in, in a way that will grow you as a person and it might not look exactly like someone else. So I could sit here and tell you if you want to grow in your faith you need to read your Bible, go to church, and pray. Because those are usually the church answers that you get. But honestly if you take those and separate them and you really dig deep on the meaning and kind of just see those three different things in a different perspective and also look at some different points then we can really see why that's effective and why you should do that and that it's not just a routinely thing that you need to get in the habit of if you really want to grow you have to take it seriously a lot of people just like open up the bible and say you know whatever i land on i'm gonna read and god's gonna speak to me and that might be the case i've done that many times and that's been the case but there's a lot of different things that each and every one of us are going through in our lives. And the Bible covers pretty much everything. And a lot of people don't think that the Bible applies to today's times, but there's very little difference, honestly, within the nature of people in the Bible and the nature of people today. They all sort of have the same sort of struggles. A lot of people have gone through the same exact thing. And it is a living and breathing example of how we should react and different people and their reactions to different things and how God helped them overcome that. The New Testament is Jesus. It's when Jesus came, died on the cross, and rose again three days later and then all the stories and tellings of Jesus when he walked on the earth and everything in the Old Testament is before living sacrifice of Jesus. The Old Testament alludes to a lot of things in the New Testament and there's so many cool connections and once you really start like reading all that you can find that and realize that this book was meant to be together and this is actually the Bible and it's God's living and breathing word and so if you want God to speak to you then you have to read his word and how are you supposed to get to know someone without actually spending time with him? So spending time with God is in turn spending time in the word because the word 
is God, and in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. So hopefully that gives you a different sort of perspective on the Bible, because a lot of people just see it as a big book that is really hard to understand. Whenever we read the same sort of scripture, you could read the same thing that I do and get something totally different out of it, because the Bible is meant to be taken seriously, not literally. So God's going to speak to us in different ways when we read the same exact thing. So it's just really interesting how if you just take the perspective of I'm approaching the Bible as I'm talking to God and if you come at it with that approach it's almost like you have more of a hunger to read it. If you're not making time every day for him then how are you going to grow? How are you going to grow in a relationship that you don't spend time with? You know, you make time for what you care about. So I can sit here and say, I understand, like, you don't have time for it. But we all make time for the things we care about. So if you care about your relationship and growing in Christ, then you have to take it seriously and you have to make time for it. And so I like to read at night and start my day off in scripture because I always want to have God's truth in my head right when I start the day because I realized how important that is. If you just remind yourself and start getting in the habit of just reading God's truth and his scriptures, you'll find how much you just apply that to your everyday life and how applicable the Bible is to every day. And praying before you read and praying after you read to help retain what you read and just really just dwelling on that and just resting in the word and just praying to God about everything. There's nothing you can't pray to God about. Just go to Him first before anyone else. Then you'll be surprised in your obedience to do that and your walk of faith to do that, that He will reward you. And you shouldn't just do that because you're going to get rewarded, but a matter of because He is a holy, sovereign, and loving God and you should want to give Him glory for that. So it is really important to, to attend church because there's fellowship there. And by fellowship, I mean just people who are coming together for the same reason and wanting to grow together and you have those sort of faithful friends but i'd say with life circumstances whenever you're thrown with something that you did not expect or you're in a really good season where everything's going well god likes to see our obedience despite the season we're in and he is proud of us and he loves us despite what we do or what our mindset is but that is just something that we totally don't deserve. He deserves our thanks every single day. And I think a lot of us get in the mindset of, God, I need to pray for this. This is going wrong, blah, blah, blah. And if you get in the habit of doing that, it just becomes like God's a wish granting factory. And if God is loving, then he's gonna give me everything that I want, right? No, because usually our plans are not as great as God's and sometimes we're going to have circumstances that aren't so great and we have no control over them and that drives us crazy. But God wants us to cling to him no matter what the circumstance is and that's how we experience growth. So we need to praise God in our hard trials and our circumstances because he is giving us an opportunity to grow. If he just sat there and said, okay, I'm gonna make everything go great in her life, so she doesn't ever really feel the need to come to me for much. Because honestly, that's in our human nature. If everything's going right, then why do we need God, right? It's a valid, valid point. A lot of people make that argument, and a lot of people don't necessarily see the need for God if they don't go through much or everything is too hard for them so why does God exist or how can God exist and there's all these sorts of statements that people throw out there and the reason that God lets us go, go through hard things and good things is so that we can cling to him in all sorts of circumstances and our world is broken and it's good to remember that because that's why we should not blame God whenever bad things happen because he gave us an opportunity to trust him in the beginning in the garden and Adam and Eve just thought you know well my plan might be better than God's so I'm gonna go ahead and do this even though he told me not to and so that automatically broke the trust 
And so that means that faithfulness in our generation and in our world is not a common thing. And so you have to fight to have a strong relationship with Christ and you have to make it a daily thing. And there's going to be spiritual warfare. There's going to be Satan's going to try to make other things appealing and make other things exciting because sin is fun. But you have to make a decision every day, every day, and have your mindset focused on Christ every single day. And it's going to be hard and there's going to be some days where you're going to screw up. And then you're going to really need God's grace and forgiveness. But that is the best thing about Him is that you can come to Him with anything and He already forgives you. And I feel like a lot of us struggle with just even forgiving ourselves after we've screwed up. But God can allow us to do that too. We just continually seek Him. He's going to show us the best path for us. And sometimes it might be hard. And most times it is. And sometimes it's just not what we want. And we get confused with what we want and what He wants. But I promise you, his way and his plans for us are so much better than what we have planned for ourselves. Even though we think in that moment that everything's going well, what if God took one of the most important things away from you? Would you still praise him and worship him? Would you still go to him for everything? Or would you be so devastated that you couldn't believe that God would let that happen? It's just the reality of it because he is loving and he does give us free will that despite a broken world, we can mend that brokenness with him because that's the only solution to the brokenness. There is no other person, place, thing that can fill the brokenness with inside us besides Jesus. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this because a lot of people are getting their fix or filling their void with uh, something else. And it's good for them now, but I promise you, you're always going to go back to the fact of why do I feel like there's something missing? So this video touched a lot of topics and I hope it helped you, just inspired you and encouraged you to grow deeper in your faith and made you see the reason for the season that you're in. Growth is the most important part in any relationship and especially with Christ. and. I just hope this encouraged you. I love you guys very much. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel for more videos like these, I also do like lifestyle and soon to do fitness videos too. So stay tuned to that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Deuces.